welcome back again everybody to a brand new episode of pine outdoors thanks so much for stopping by to check the channel out links to my store instagram and facebook can be found in the description box below i like my other cooling plate system so much that i have made some for my trout worm system um, i'm going to show you guys how to do this you can go down to your local steel shop and ask them for some aluminum stock 6061 I got this in five eighths of an inch thick, and then I have my dimensions of my molds. These molds are seven inches long by four inches tall. They'll cut them to the right size. Then once you get them, you're gonna have to make you a hole. It's gonna go right here. That's gonna connect these two channels together, just like so. One thing I will tell you is I went with quarter inch NPT, and I would honestly suggest, I would go with something smaller like this, although something to keep in mind is uh, the larger diameter the bore is, I have a feeling that that's gonna affect the ability for the plates to cool more efficiently. But even with this channel, they cool magnificently. These molds will stay at 67 to 72 degrees the whole time, even after I shoot a gallon. I just got to keep the reservoir filled up with some uh, ice water. This is a extremely simple process. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, I screwed up one plate, but I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on what you can do to prevent that from happening. I've done three of these now, and I feel like I've learned enough that I can show you how to do it for yourself. The stock, I wound up paying... $20 a plate. I spent like $180 plus tax. You're going to have to order you a drill bit and a tap that's going to fit whatever caps that you get and whatever kind of push to connect fittings. You need to make sure to get the same diameter, same thread, everything. You can go on Amazon, get the tap, the push to connect fittings and the caps. Just get them all the same dimensions. Make sure to get enough of them for however many plates you're going to be doing. For each one, you're going to need one cap and you're going to need two push to connect fittings because just like here we're running this regular quarter inch water line that comes from home depot uh, you can get that and then down inside of the reservoir down here there's a pump that's going to pump the liquid up it's going to go up one hose it's going to cycle through all of the plates and then it comes out back into the reservoir and it cools it to start with i've modified a nail set so that way i can ping me a little spot up here in the top that center that way i have a place to start my drill and then I go straight to the quarter inch drill bit and I actually bore me a hole that's about this long. And I make sure that I'm centered, get my first, my first line centered. And then I take the long drill bit right here and then we'll go all the way down, all the way down. And then I do the same thing for going horizontally this way to connect the channels. Once you've done that, you're pretty much on the downhill slide. You can go ahead and take your tap, make your threads, Install all your fittings, your pipe dope, and you're good to go. To keep this simple here, we don't got to make this complex. <clears throat> it's a really simple process. And this is what I do here. I just find me somewhere in the center, and I try to get back away from the edge if I can. Somewhere about in there, that's going to be pretty good. Okay, so now we got our mark here. I'm going to say somewhere in there. Okay, we got two dimples, just like so. Now, I just get these kind of started here. I try to get somewhere in the center. And as you're going in, just take your time. Because, you know, if you get off a little bit, you can tilt your drill bit, go a little bit, and then start bringing her down where you want it to actually be. to go as far as down as I can because that's less this drill bit seems to work a lot better than this other one that I got from up at the Home Depot seeing I got a little close on my edge over here so I'm doing this rocket this way and taking her on down let's start while we got our drill bit here I'm actually gonna come up a little ways from the bottom and I, I ain't measuring all this if you want to get technical with it you really could measure it and make your marks and 
do it all perfect, but I'm kind of a I'm kind of a functional type person. I would I don't care about the aesthetics of it. Now what I suggest you do in here is taking your drill bit, <clears throat> figuring out where it's gonna kind of land for your hole. And I'm just gonna say maybe up about right here. You wanna mark that with your fingernail and then you're gonna wanna take your little piece of tape and we're gonna mark the tape or mark the bit rather, sorry. Somewhere around in there. And I'd rather go too shallow than I had go too deep because then you're gonna have to patch the other side of the, the other side of the cooling plate. I go ahead and get a little lube on there. And this is where you really want to make sure that you're worried about your about how straight how straight you are going down. Okay, somewhere thereabouts, that's where I'm gonna say we're gonna leave it. And we can go ahead and dump this out. Make sure our tract is pretty clean there. Now this is where we'll go ahead and we'll start doing the, uh, the long, the long bores. Get your little dog of oil. Now we're not going to stop here on this one. We're going to stop on this one. Once it gets down in there, we'll know, but we should hit that opening first. This is where it's extremely important that you make sure that you start this hole, that you're, you're as straight as you can be. All you can give her at the very beginning, because sometimes these plates is kind of they have a tendency to be hard and soft in other areas and it seems like if I get a good running start I don't know if it's, good, it's like preheating it or what also at the deeper you go the more trash you get in there the more you're gonna have to stop and dump the trash that's it right there we went through yep that's that and it's just as quick as that it happens so then all we got to do is, and it's not really necessary at this point, but I like taking this little shop, this little shop blower thing here, kind of get some of the trash off. Get the trash out of there. And I want to tell you, if you get down in here, you get the drilling and it ain't going in. You need to stop and you need to make sure to get turn this thing upside down and knock any of these little shavings out of there because it'll help you a lot. Right there, I think that was it. And the way that we can test is see if the air comes out. I might not have got it. Yep. That's it. All right, that's the hard part. Once you're done with that, you're on a home stretch now. Just take your tap, sit it down in there, and uh, get it somewhat straight, you know? And I just take this crescent wrench right here, get a good grip on it, and uh, you push down, push down and you just start twisting. But you wanna keep your downward pressure until this thing starts biting like it did just right there. Then you can get you another grip. And after a certain point, you ain't gotta push down no more. You just gotta crank her down. So I'm gonna do this right here to all three holes and I'll show you what to do after that. Okay, so I have tapped, let me move the camera here. I have tapped all three of the holes. This is where we're gonna wanna make sure to clean and stuff out we don't want it in there we don't want it to cycle through our pump for any reason um, now this this is really this is the easiest part uh, I want to make sure to tap this really good because anything that you don't countersink you're gonna wind up having to uh, grind off if that bothers you you know and really it's just easier just to tap it a little bit further if you need to then you take your pipe dope give her a good glob of it you probably don't need that much but I subscribe to the theory if a little bit will do good a whole lot will do better
All right, you don't got to install this thing super tight, but I have been. Take your little rag and wipe the rest of that off there, and that's good. That's close enough for me. I'm not going to worry about going no deeper. Uh, now, we'll just flip it up. We want this side here. This is the easiest part. And you don't have to go super deep with these. Slather them up, put a little pipe dope on there. Kind of get it started. And then just give it the old Gorilla Grip. Start cranking her down. There we go, we got her started. Sometimes they can be a, a kind of a cantankerous, you know, trying to get them started. Just gotta take your time with it. We have we have an observer. Can we say can we say hola Chepe? Hey, hola amigos. Hola mi gente. All right, and that's a wrap, you guys. You can uh, do it as technical as you want or as scrappy as you want. It really don't matter as long as it serves its purpose. The purpose is to increase production, make it easier for you to make baits, and uh, yeah, hopefully make some more money. If you got the chops to market it and sell it, then sell it. And there you go. There's your cooling plate. I've got baits here on the top, but I have 10 molds, okay? So I have nine cooling plates that are in between. You see, I don't have an extra cooling plate on the outsides. You don't need that. <clears throat> so if you've got 10 molds, you can get away with nine. Um, in my case, on the trout worms, I'm going to have like six molds. So I'm just going to do five the cooling plates. So that leaves just one more of these to do. And when I'm done with that, then we can just hook it up and go. I already have a, a cooling system and all the stuff that I built here from this, I'll link it. If you're not going to buy them and you have a little DIY in you, then there's no reason why you can't make them for quite a bit cheaper. But, you know, you're either going to you're going to pay one way or another. You're going to pay with sweat equity or you're going to pay with money. Uh, depends on which one you have more of. OK, so we're at 63 degrees right now. I'm going to let this circulate, and I will be back with you guys shortly. That's the system right there. Looks like I got one of my plates upside down, but that's okay. In the future, um, if you guys are interested, I could probably do a video on how to build these air vices. Mine won't look nearly as nice as this, but I could show you how to do it in a budget way. If that's something you're interested, just comment in the comment section below. Say, hey, yeah, let's do it. For now, you could always just use this speed clamp. Um, there's no reason why it won't work. And to be honest with you, I've got an 800 gallon an hour pump in here for this, this machine, but I don't think that it matters, but I'll do some testing and, uh, in a follow up video, or maybe whenever we do the air vice or something at some point in time, I will let you guys know if you actually truly need it or not. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one.